Well, hello everyone. This is Mr. Roman. We're going to be working on the folding chair today uh, using Onshape software. All right. First, you'll need to log into Onshape on one of your screens uh, using Google Chrome, and on your other screen, please uh, log into Canvas and open up the folding chair Canvas page so you get the directions. All right. So Onshape and Canvas. Okay. And there's the name of the Canvas page. Folding chair, there's some pictures of it. Here's the parts that we're about to draw. You'll see pictures of those, and you can also see them in text form down here. This is the final product that you're gonna see over here that we are about to draw. Okay, you'll need to hit the Create button and create a new document in Onshape. Okay, just call it your last name, first name, and holding chair. Send that. And you'll get a, a blank screen. All right, this thing should automatically start you down here in a part studio, which is where you draw your parts. Later on, we'll move into an assembly. We'll create some drawings down here and an exploded view. All right, so here we go. Let's start a new sketch. Okay, I'm going to do this on the front plane. I'm also going to hide all of my other planes by pressing the eyeball over here. You can always turn those back on and I'm going to right mouse click and left click on view normal to sketch plane. Plan on doing that, that will turn your drawing so it's facing straight at you. Okay, let's start off. Let's draw these parts top to bottom. Uh, we've got four uh, five eighths diameter dowels that are each an inch and a half long. Okay, uh, we can we can just draw one and later on we'll make uh, three more copies. Okay, so here goes our first part. Okay, and just pull out a circle. I don't care how big it is right now. Okay, because later on you then go to dimension, the dimension tool right there. With the dimension tool on, click on the circle, pull out, and click again to set down your dimension. And 5 base is 0.625 as a decimal. Right there, so there's our circle size. Okay, let's finish that sketch. And you can turn it at an angle. I clicked on this menu right here below the view cube, and I chose diametric, isometric, or trimetric is fine too. All right, just so you can see it in 3D. And finally, you're going to hit extrude. Click in the center of the circle to pick this area. And the depth that we want to extrude it, it says right over here, one and one half inches. So I need to edit that, so 1.5, and enter on your keyboard. Okay, and if that looks good to you, you can hit the check mark to be done with that part. Okay, so our small little dowels are done. Okay, one copy is enough. Okay, let's do the same thing, but for a nine inch long dowel. Let's sketch again. And I should probably turn on my front plane again so you can see it. Select that plane. Okay, if you want to turn it normal to yourself, you'd right click and hit normal. Or you can just draw like this in 3D. Your diameter is 0.625 still. Finish that sketch. Extrude is right here. And at any point, if I'm going too fast here, please uh, hit the space bar on your keyboard to pause me. You can use the arrow keys to back up or rewind. Uh, I think it's five or 10 seconds. And here's nine for nine inches. Nine, enter. 
And there's the long barrel and the check mark right up here to finish that. Okay, and there's our two doubles. We have the first two parts done. Now we're getting into the braces. And if you're wondering what these names are, if you scroll down and look at the color code, braces is right here. There's two of them that are an inch and a half wide by ten and a half inches long. It says it right there in text, but it also says it right here in graphic form. So let's sketch, hit the front plane. And if you can't see the front plane, you need to go over here and click on the eyeball to get it to turn on. Okay, and let's draw ourselves a rectangle. Uh, let's see, right there, rectangle. And we can draw this just to the side of the devils. Yeah, I don't care what size you pull out right now, just take a guess. Click it down, so that was two left clicks. Before you hit finish sketch, you need to use the dimension tool to fix the measurements. Okay, so this edge, I left click on it. And it looks like I need to type 1.5. And the length, click on that, click again, and that is 10.5 right there. Right there, so that part, if I zoom out, you can see it all. So there's braces, there's two of them, but we're only going to draw one for now. Hit the finish, green check mark, and extrude. Okay, so this is the same routine that's going to go on for a few more parts where you draw a sketch, finish it, extrude it. And it doesn't tell us how thick these are. Uh, I'm just going to tell you right here, your, your pieces that you built with, these are all 0.75 inch thick board. So all of your extrusions coming up are 0.75 or 3 quarters of an inch. All right, even though the directions do not say that, I'm telling it to you. Okay, and we'll hit the check mark again. So again, that's one and a half wide, 10 and a half long, 0.75 thick. All right, there's your braces. We're on to the seats, these green ones showing here. Another sketch. Click on the front plane, click your rectangle tool, pick any spot you like, start sketching, take a guess as to how big it is. Again, you can see those measurements are not correct. That's okay. Use the dimension tool to click and type. This thing is 4.5 inches wide. And the length, I could click here or here, it doesn't matter which one. And this thing is an even 12 inches. So 12 enter on the keyboard. Click the check mark. There's our original sketch for the seat. And as you can guess, we're going to extrude it. Click the middle of the rectangle. Type 0.75 for depth. And feel free to pause my video and draw that and keep up. There we are. Uh, we are down to the rails. Okay, and the rails right here are an inch and a half by nine inches long. Uh, we'll then round them over and we'll put a 0.625 hole in the end. Right over here, so we have a little bit more to do on these parts. And same with the legs coming up right here. So we're going to start off by drawing just a regular rectangle and we'll round it off and add the hole. That's a pretty common procedure. Just draw the outlining shape and draw this somewhere nearby. The other parts. Take a guess. Dimension. Okay, those are nine. Nine enter. And they're also an inch and a half wide. 1.5, enter. Okay, the sketch is mostly done. Okay, we're not going to hit the green check mark this time. Okay, we have a little bit more to go. We need to round off our ends like you would on the disc sander in the shop, and we need to drill some holes uh, as well. So if we zoom in here on the directions, okay, you'll be able to see here that this radius of this arc is 0.75 inches and the center of this hole is also 0.75 inches in, 0.75 over. 
All right, I know that because these are an inch and a half wide. Halfway in is 0.75, that's half of one and a half. So that makes those measurements easy. So a bunch of 0.75 measurements coming up, but then the whole diameter is only 5 eighths, 0.625. So if you didn't catch all that, just follow me here on the next part. I'll show you what that looks like back on, on shape. All right, so here we go. I need to round over. And you know what, I think I'm going to right click and view sketch, view normal to sketch plane. All right, that makes it a little easier to visualize. All right, uh, our round over or fillet as it's known is right here. Let's click that. Okay, I wander over to this corner. If I pick on that corner dot, uh, this will work. I could also click on the two lines. They both should work. Okay, it wants to know which direction do I want to round over in or, or out. It's going to be in, but if you click that, usually it flips over to the other side. And not 0.25, we need 0.75, so it's a little bigger. All right, you might have to double click on that measurement to get that to select 0.75. And there. there it is. And then repeat that down here. I'm going to try and click on the two lines this time. So same thing. So you either can click on the corner dot or click on the two lines. And it looks like it's it's saving my old old setting from the previous one. I don't need to type anything new here. But if it doesn't look right, you got to type in 0.75. Right there, I'm going to hit enter on that. Okay, it rounds off my end. That's kind of nice. And it looks like it gives us a center point to those that radius. And that is going to be exactly where the whole center is that's coming up. So that makes this a lot easier. Less dimensions to type in. So I'll grab this, the circle tool, click on the center, take a guess as to how big it is. I'm going to draw it clearly incorrectly here. And then fix it with the dimension tool. So again, the holes are 5 ace. 5 ace is 0.625 at the decimal. 5 divided by 8 is 0.625 right there. That's just one of those memor uh, measurements I've memorized over the years because I've done this so many times. All right, and let's hit the check mark. Finish the sketch. I'd like to see it in diametric or symmetric. All right, and when we extrude, we just have to make sure we pick this area. You don't want to pick in the circle. We don't want to to extrude that, just this area out here. So left click, notice it leaves the hole, and these are 0.75 thick, right there. All right, feel free to pause me and draw that if you need to, or back up using your arrow keys on your keyboard on the video. Okay, that is our rails. Okay, I'm gonna keep moving along. Later we'll make four copies of that. And finally, our leg legs are our last parts. There's four legs. We're going to draw just one. Okay, and notice for me here that the legs, let's see, where did they go? Legs are an inch and a half by 15 and a half long. Inch and a half by 15 and a half. We have a little bit of work to do to get these holes in the right spot. Very similar to the rails, but we have a center hole. And that center hole is eight inches away from the end on the right by the other hole, or seven and a half from the left. So it appears that this is not in the in the dead center. It's close, but not, not quite right there. So don't be fooled by that. All right, so our last part. Let's start a sketch. Select a sketch plane. Select your front view right there. OK, I'm going to right click and view normal to sketch plane. Turn it. Okay, and legs, one and a half by 15 and a half. So let's start off with a rectangle. Okay, we're gonna round over the ends. And these are the same round overs as before. We can assume that those are three quarters. It does tell us that information right here as well. Okay, but 0.75 is the fillet. So let's do that to all four corners. One, two, three, and four. Four. All right, oops, you know what I forgot? I forgot to dimension it, the whole thing. 
Should have done that first. Let's do that first. Sorry about the mistake there. I knew something didn't quite look right. So 1.5 is the left dimension. And the top edge is 15.5. Okay, and now you can round over your corners and they should look right. 0.75 on those and same over here. And those look good to me. All right, hit under those. Okay, don't hit the green check mark yet. We're not there yet. All right, and next up, we need to get our two holes in place. So let's draw the one on the right side, and then we'll do the center. The one near the center is lost. Okay, so just like the previous part, go to the center of the fillet. Look for that dot there. You could measure uh, using the dimension tool to get that location found, but this seems easier to me. So two clicks, and now I'm typing 0.625. And that one's good. Okay, now moving over to the other hole, I want to hover around the center of the this hole. So this little line called an inference line. Inferencing just kind of uses the information that's already out here. You hover around the middle. You don't do that, you're kind of having to guess and do more measurement. By simply inferencing, you're gonna take care of one of your dimensions. All right, I'm gonna clearly miss the target here on purpose. I'll draw a circle over here, and then I'm going to fix it, as always, with my dimension tool. So here's dimension. Uh, let's see, I could pick either the left end or the right end. Seven and a half from the left, eight from the right. Uh, you decide. It doesn't, doesn't matter which one you pick here. And I'm going to click on my left end. All right, we're going to redo that, that part right there. All right, so let's move on to the legs. Right here, we're gonna start off by drawing a big rectangle. We'll draw the holes in next. <clears throat> and then we'll round over the ends last. Okay, we'll do in that order. So draw the rectangle, put the holes in place, and then round over the ends. The reason we're doing that order is because it's easier to measure off a square end and get your holes in the right place. If you round them off first, it gets a little bit harder. Okay, notice that these holes are not in the center. These ones right here shows it's eight and a half from the right end and seven, I'm sorry, eight from the right end and seven and a half from the left end. So they're not dead center. They're close, but not quite. So keep that in mind. I won't care if you measure from the left end or the right end, just as long as you pick the right measurements um, right there. So let's start a sketch for the legs. Click on your front view. Okay, right click, view normal the sketch plane. Let's draw us a big rectangle, something like this, plenty big. And let's get that dimension right away so it's the right size. So we got one and a half, 1.5 enter. And the top and bottom edge are 15.5 enter. Okay, let's leave the end square for now. And let's draw a couple of uh, holes. In the first one, we're gonna we're gonna zoom in on the midpoint. Notice that square pops up for me. It found the center for me, and then I'm going to slow over. So it'll it'll keep helping me uh, based my location off of that. So that is the center. Draw a circle of your choosing. Again, I have the, I have the circle tool on right now. All right, and if we dimension this. this we're going to dimension this from the end line to here. This thing is 0.75 in the end. And the size of the hole, another dimension, is 0.625. OK, now, if I hadn't picked the midpoint to help me out here, I would have also had to have dimension from here to here. But notice that's already correct. It's already 0.75, I didn't even didn't even have to type that. So don't over dimension. You don't need to do this one that I'm showing right now. 
and hit escape and turn that off. Okay, so that one should be good. And we have one more hole to go. So if you would hover over the center of the first hole and use that inferencing line to help you get over to the middle and zoom out if that helps. Just take a guess, but make sure you're on that dashed yellow inferencing line. Draw a circle, dimension, 0.625. Okay, and notice I'm not in the right place yet. I need to measure from the end, either the right end, eight inches, or left end, seven and a half. You choose, doesn't matter to me. I'm gonna pick this right line, pick the center of that circle, right there, pull this away, either way, up or down. Okay, and I need to type eight, enter, and it pulls that back to the right spot. Okay, so we're looking good so far. And the final step is to fill it, the ends, so I'll run them over. So let's pick the corner guy. Okay, you can pick that if you like. There's one. If you don't do the dot, if you pick this line and that line, it will also do it. It takes two clicks to get it done though. It doesn't matter to me which way you do it. I'm going to pick the corners because it's a few less clicks for me. All right, looks like that part is done from what I can tell. So we're going to now hit the check mark to tell it we're done sketching. All right, that looks good to me. And let's go to Diametric. All right, and let's extrude. And same as all of our other parts. Click the middle of it. You can see the holes are forming here. It's a little too thick at this point. It needs to be back at 0.75 for a depth. Enter. And hit the green check mark. Okay. And I wish I knew why I colored these all different. That's just a default setting. Um, I didn't pick any of these colors, so we'll just leave those alone. All right, so all of your parts are made uh, at this point. You got small doubles, long double braces, seats, rails, and legs. All right, next up, we're going to put this all together as an assembly. So this is like you being out in the shop with your parts and you're going to start screwing things together. Okay, we're not going to have screw holes or screws. We're going to just be, be mating these together, uh, almost like you're putting glue on the parts in a way and just gluing them together virtually, of course. All right, so just take a good look at how things go uh, here, and we're going to assemble it. Our final view should look something like this uh, chair in its seated position. Um, here's its folded up position, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to go for this right here. All right, so we're going to move over to the Assembly tab. If there is no Assembly tab showing on your screen right here, please hit the plus sign, and you can hit Create Assembly. Okay, I'm not going to because there's already one here for me. That's just in case it's not there for you. All right, so notice we have some different buttons up here. We don't have the Sketch button or, or the Drawing Tools, those kinds of things. These are... Um, different connectors called mates. Okay, we're going to be using fasten mate, and we're also going to be using uh, slider mate uh, quite a bit. I'm sorry, we're going to be using cylindrical mate quite a bit. All right, it's time to start inserting your parts. So find the insert button up here. All right, you can insert the entire group of parts that we have. However, we need to get our quantities correct, so I'm, I'm going to avoid the temptation to do that. Um, let's just insert what we need at a time. Let's just start off. Yes, there's four, four dowels here, four small dowels. So we'll go ahead and click on the part, and then click it out on your screen. Click and click. So four of those. Okay, let's get one of our nine inch dowels out there. Okay, I'm going to skip the, the brace for now. And we'll come back to that just to make this simple. 
I'm going to skip the seat, but I am going to put in my four rails. I'm doing this just to keep this a little less complicated and simpler to, to follow. And I will do four of the legs. Okay, and we'll come back to the parts we skipped a little later. Okay, and there you are. If you've got, looks like four, eight, 12, I got 13, 13 of the 17 parts out there. Okay, and there they are. All right, it's time we start bringing these, uh, these parts together uh, as an assembly. Again, here in the assembly tab with all our parts inserted. Okay, let's start by putting um, a few of our small dowels together. Let's use the revolute command. Notice where I'm pointing right there. Okay, we are going to use revolute in four different places here. Okay, we're going to do a revolute uh, on two of these centers. Like this, if you need to use the flip tool to flip it back and forth, make sure it's sticking through the part before you hit uh, check mark. Okay, and notice it gives you the, your history of everything you just put in place. Okay, this one's red because we haven't made it yet. So it's not an error just yet. Okay, this one. Let's not stick it through the same way as last time. Let's rotate just a little bit so we can see in. Let's go to the very back of the hole. Flip it around so it pokes out the front side. Like that. So they're opposite of each other. These two that you just did. All right, and now let's go grab the long dowel. Grab the end. Um, let's stick it on the second one. We're going to join these two together here in a moment. Okay, so it pokes through going away from the small dowel. And let's use Revolute. Oops, looks like it's already turned on. And let's grab the that end and let's go all the way through to the back side of this one right there so it looks something like that and this is just a preview this will come with it here in just a second as soon as i hit the check mark all right so there's one half of our set of legs right there i'm gonna grab this and pull it aside that's what that should look like right there okay on the other half We are going to do kind of the opposite in a way. Okay, these ones will go on the outside. These will go around and on the outside of these legs. All right, so back to Revolute again. Okay, let's use Revolute to put the end of this dowel there, bring them together, and the other dowel, which I can barely see here, if you have to rotate your view, do it. That one goes to the very back of this hole. For some reason that didn't work. Let's try that again. I guess I clicked on the wrong thing. Revolute. This dowel. the back side of this hole. All right, and it appears that it worked this time. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Okay, now these two small dowels, they'll get stuck in and coming out of these upper holes. So I'm going to be going all the way at the back of this hole in just a moment. So Revolute. Back of that dowel to the back of the hole, all the way in there. And flip it if you need to so it pokes out the front side. There we go. And now to the back piece, Revolute. And I'll go front side here and spin this around. 
rotate till you can see the inside of the hole. And I zoom in, I'm going to the very back of that hole. Uh, that doesn't seem quite right to me. Let me try that again. Not sure what happened there. <clears throat> there we go. I must have just clicked on the wrong thing. Okay, so this is all a good sign at this point. All right, there's what I have. Okay, this long dowel connects the two insides, the two short sides, two short dowels, I mean, connect the outer legs. All right, time to put our rails on next. Revolute. And grab the back of this one. Stick it to the front. Okay, the next one's gonna go right on the inside here. So let's grab the front of this hole. Make sure you're just grabbing the hole, not the outer outline. Spin it around. Stick it right to that circle. Flip it if you need to, but hopefully you don't have to. Um, the next one, I'm going to pick the back side of this hole. Stick it to the front side of this. Check. And this one, I'm grabbing the front and going to the back. Here. Make sure you pick the circle. All right, that's a good sign if you've got that far with me. At this point, you should be able to grab it, and the whole thing should move. It shouldn't rotate yet. This is normal right here. Okay. All right, I would like to see this thing um, sit still and rotate for us and not drag around like I just showed. Uh, I'm going to attempt something here. Let's try making this long dowel. Let's make that fixed. Fixed means it's stuck in space. It can't go anywhere. Everything else will rotate around it. Let's see how this goes. Let's right click on that part and choose fix. All right, let's grab onto a leg and let's pull on it and see what happens. Right there, how about this leg? I should swing under, notice again, the long dowel is fixed in space. It's not moving anywhere. Okay, this is a little awkward here, doing this. Okay, I don't know, make kind of an X, something like that. It doesn't have to be totally perfect. Okay, you might notice now that our, our dowels have come out. That might seem seem odd to you. Okay, this dowel should be over here. All right, I noticed a mistake I made here after I rotated things around a bit. I noticed that this dowel is, is stuck over here, and I regret putting that the way it was. Okay, it needs to stick over here into these two the legs, the outer leg and the outer rail, but I had it stuck to the end of the dowel, the long dowel. So if you would find that for me, all right, like by hovering over your parts over here in the list and keep going until you see the one that highlights this part right here. So for me, it's Revolute 8. It might be a slightly different number for you. All right, I right clicked on mine and I selected Suppress. Suppress means to just turn off. And notice now it lets me pull this off here. So I know that's the that's the Revolute I want to delete. So let me just get rid of that one entirely. That was a mistake. I, I should have um, did a Revolute mate over to the leg and the rail. So let's do this. This can go right there instead. And so if that popped up for you, uh, please fix that. So it's not stuck to the end of the long dowel. And the other one over here, I can see that's in the wrong place. And I'm watching this part. Here, I'll bring it over for you. I'm watching this dowel as I hover over here. It might be 
that are close to the previous one. Yeah, this one's Revolut 7 right there. So right click, let me suppress that to see if I can pull it away. Yep, so that is it. Seven for me is the other one. So I'm going to delete it and correct that mistake. And I'm going to stick it right over here where it belongs. So if you need to do that, go ahead and do it. Sorry about the mistake. <coughs> okay, so right now things are rotating fairly well for me. Um, I have an approximate you know, X shape going on here. Just get it kind of in the ballpark like this. Sometimes you got to tug on the bottom of the leg, sometimes up here on the rail to get these to sit about like they would in real life. Something like that. Okay, next up we need to insert our seats and our braces. So let's do our seats first. So insert, I'm going to go grab two seats and place them in here close to the rest of the model. Check mark. All right, so let's do the easy one first. Let's connect a seat to the outer two rails. Okay, and we're not going to be using Revolut. We'll use Fasten this time. Fasten Mate. Like that for me. And we are going to fasten this corner to this corner right here. And it's important you select it in the appropriate way. So look for the little XYZ coordinates. Okay, we wander over here close to the corner. Okay, notice how it changes position depending on where you hover your mouse over here. It can be a little confusing. I'm looking, f when I go just inside of the corner of the piece of wood, you'll see that position show up. It, that is the shape I want. If I go to the outside, I get some other position. and We'll get a messed up situation. So I want this side that would be attached to this surface right here. Again, I zoom in. I'm looking for the same thing, but in this corner, until that's wrong. But this right here, that's what you're looking for. Click those two. Now it still might look a little goofy. You might have some flipping to do with the arrow. And reorient with this button until this thing sits like that right there, where it's flush on this corner and around on the other end, around the corner. And this is exactly what you're trying to accomplish. If it didn't work, delete it and retry it again. And I'll do the same thing over here on this one. Okay, so let's zoom in. Go just to the inside of that corner. I'm looking at that right there. Being mated to this right here. Okay, and check mark. And don't be afraid to undo it if it didn't go well. Okay, control Z is undo. All right, I'm just going to push this down and out of the way for now. Okay, now for the other seat. This one takes just a little more effort, but not too bad. Okay, we're going to, again, we're going to fasten it the same way that we did the first one, get close to the corner. Okay, if I flip this up here in space, it looks like I would need to go around to this side. Okay, temporarily we'll have it be flush to each other and reorient until it looks right. Okay, so again, I know that's not correct, but if you look at the X, Y, and Z colorful coordinates here, it looks like we need to pull this over or offset it in the X direction. So in the direction of the red X, Offset. So you check the offset button over here. Here's the X. And I know this is 1.5 inches because it needs to be offset over uh, this leg and this rail, which are both 0.75 added up together would be 1.5. Right there, that's where I got that number from. So let's see how this goes. Is that enough? reason that doesn't look like enough. Oh no, I was wrong. Not one point, but there's three pieces, two legs and a rail. So let's uh, let's fix that last one. You reopen that up. That's 2.25. Not 1.5. Okay, there we go. It should sit just out over that rail. And check mark. Okay, so we've got one of them. 
This last one can be a little tricky. I had to, I had to practice this one a little bit before I made this video. Let's see if I can do it again. I think we're going to fasten this corner to the same corner here. Okay, but again, we're going to offset. And it looks like this is the Y direction this time. I believe it's 2.25 again, but this time is Y. And I think it's negative because it looks like we're going the opposite direction of that green line right there. So going this way would be negative. <coughs> Excuse me, 2.25. Let's see how this goes. If I hit this green check mark. Okay, I think that's right. And we'll close the last fasten there. And see if it all worked out. Looks like it did, and that's a good sign. And from my side view, I'll drag these up so they look about right, as best as I can. Okay, and that's pretty good for now. All right, the last part is our braces, and then we're done with the assembly. So well, let's insert two of these parts. Okay, and this will be very similar to how we put the seat on, except we're now locking these down to our, our legs. Okay, let's do the easy one first. The outside one is definitely easier to do. I'm just pulling these over a little closer. Okay, so let's fasten. Uh, let's fasten, uh, let's see. Um, let's pick the bottom inside corner. Zoom in to make it easy. Come over here, this corner. Right there, let's offset this up. Looks like Positive Y is going down, so for me, I'm going to go in negative Y. How um, about negative two inches here? There's no real important number here. Two, two is a good estimate. Right there. Looks good, and we want the other leg to be connected to it as well. Well, I wonder if that's actually necessary. It might be. It might actually be walk together through the seat and over to this leg, so it's possible I don't even need to fasten it to that side. So yeah, we can skip that. Okay, then let's go to the other one. Um, let's pick this corner right here. Spin it around. And we're going over here to this corner. Okay, we have two offsets to do. We need to pull it out 0.75. That looks like, it's hard to tell. I believe that's the Z direction. Nope, I'm wrong. Uh, it's, it's a negative X direction. So let's go negative 0.75 for X. And let's go green wall. That's going to be a positive 2, it looks like. So it matches the other side. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try that again. Okay. And negative x, 0.75, negative 0.75, and let's go, what direction is up here? Looks like a negative y, so let's go negative 2. There we go. OK, 
Okay, it's looking like a fully assembled seat that we have here. Okay, so I'm going to tweak this just a little more to get it to look right. And so if all's gone well here, uh, you should have a completed assembly. You can rotate your arms and legs, or excuse me, your rails and legs, like so. All right, and that is the end of the assembly. Okay, we're going to move on into uh, the final stage, which are the part drawings. Okay, we're going to communicate all of our ideas uh, on the paper. So if somebody else were to try and build your, your model, uh, you would be able to do it, or they would be able to take your directions and be able to do it. Okay, so we're going to click on the plus symbol down here in the lower left corner and click on Create Drawing. Okay, and we're just going to use an ANSI A inch template. That's just the piece of paper we're going to send our directions to. So this would be like me handing you the papers to go out in the shop with the directions on them how to make this happen. Yeah, once in a while you have to refresh your browser. Things aren't running as smooth as they should, and that's what's going on on my screen right now. If you ever need to do that, feel free to. Okay, and here is my, my paper. It's an A-sized sheet of paper, which is like regular printer paper, 8.5 by 11. It's got a title block in here that we can type our information into. Okay, so we need to insert a view. So let's start with our very first part. Click on that, click on the insert button, and let's go get part number one, which for me is one of the small dowels. You can pick your scale size. I'm going to let you make some decisions, maybe two to one. Just pick a scale that uh, seems to look big enough to see, but not so big that it's overpowering. Again, this is a really small dowel, but it kind of looks big on my paper here. So there would be your front view showing the end of it and a side view directly to the right, or you could go directly to the top. That would work as well. I would also like you to click back on the original view one time and drag a 3D isometric over to the upper right part of your screen, just like that. Okay, you can hit enter. Or escape to get out of that. You know, you're done placing your views. You right click on this one with your mouse. It's a right mouse click button. Uh, hit, go to show and hide, and let's select shaded view. And there we go. That looks nice. And the rest here, I need you to add dimensions. Dimensions are pretty quick. Every dimension tool. On this one, all we got to do is dimension the circle. The doll, so 0.625, and down here on the right side view, we need to know how long it is. Okay, so basically, you got to put enough information that somebody else could read this and have all the measurements to go make it in the shop. All right, so that sheet is done. Okay, we're not going to start another drawing down here. We're not doing that. We're going to go to the sheets button on the left side. Okay, here's the sheet you just made and listed in the history. Let's add another sheet. Okay, so here's a second one, all in the same same set of drawings. All right, let's go back. Let's insert the next part. Insert. Let's go to the second part. For me, it's the long dowel. Okay, put an end view in here. Now, I'm noticing this is way too big. So, let's undo that. Try it again. Insert. Pick that part. And let's change the scale. Three to one is way too big. This thing's already nine inches long. This, in a one to one scale, this will fill up most of your page. Uh, let's see. Scroll up here to find it. Like one to one. Let's see what that looks like. Still, yeah, it's a little, it's a little big. I'm gonna escape from that. Undo. So maybe a one to two, so a half size. That looks appropriate right there. Click on the original view again. 
So you can bring up a 3D view. Okay. And hit escape from your keyboard to get out. Right click on the isometric view, show hide and show shaded view. Okay, add your dimensions like before, 0.625 on that end, and our length is nine inches. Try to get the measurement right in the middle. Right there, and that one is done. And our second one is done. So let's go on to the third one. Let's add another sheet. We're just going to keep going here until we get all of our, our parts inserted. Okay, part three is our brace. And you can see that uh, three to one is way too big for me. So let's get down to, uh, let's try one to two again. That might be all right. Okay, let's make the front view that side. The front view is generally the one that's supposed to show the most information. And a top view. Click back on the original view, slide over to the right. And it should just automatically give you a end view and let's see if we can fit a 3d isometric perfect that works so add those in hit escape right click shaded and dimension and do the most important dimensions on this front view and so we also try to drag our dimensions out so they're between the views. So you can see that up here, 10 and a half is the same as 10 and a half down here. So front view, top view, right view. Number goes in the middle. And over here, 1.5. And we need to know the thickness. So this we can either do thickness here or here. It's your choice. They both would be okay. All right, and that one's done. Okay, the next one, let's go on and start another sheet again. Insert. Okay, let's do our seat. Okay, our seats are our biggest parts here, so we're gonna have to shrink down. I'm thinking about a one to three or four. Let's see what one to three looks like. Yeah, one to three should be good. Front view, top view, click the original again, go to the right, click the original, upper right. Okay, and that's our views. Right click on the isometric and shade it so we can see it. Okay, add your dimensions. Or your seat length width and your thickness okay and that one's done moving on from the seat we've got our rails and then our legs will be last Okay, rails are nine inches long, so this is probably another one to three or so. Yep, that's probably all right. Front, top, click the front again and drag out a right view. Click the front view, drag out an isometric view. Hit escape. And right click on that for show hide. Show shaded. Dimensioning. Yeah, this one's a little different because we got a rounded end. We have to uh, treat this differently. If you try to dimension from, if you try to dimension this, you won't get the whole piece. We want to know the full length. So if you click the end and you click over here, the very end, you're still not going to get it. So it looks like this measurement will need to move up to the Top view. And we pull this back. So let's do it this way from the top view. Okay, there's your length. There's your width. 
Now we need to know some information about the rondover. Place that about here. And we need to know the hole size. All right, so the last thing that's, that's not obvious here, we need to know where the hidden lines are when they go through these other views. So let's right click on these and show hidden lines. So your dash lines show up there, showing where the hole goes all the way through. And let's do the same, show hidden lines right there. So they should all line up with each other. Okay, so that one's done. And our final sheet, let's insert our legs. Start with one to three, I think that should work. Front view, top view. Click the front view, over to right view, click the front again and place your isometric up there. Escape key and then show hide. Right click, show shaded. Okay, uh, the other views, let's get the right click show. We have some hidden lines to show here and hidden lines over here. Show hide, hidden lines. We're not these dash lines because we have holes going through, so we need that information. And now let's conclude with dimensioning. All right, so give me your full length from the top view. Let's do your width over here. Do your roundovers. There and if you don't label the other one, you can you can assume that this one applies down there, so you don't need to label it a second time. Um, we don't want to over label our drawings like that. All right, and that is done. Right there. Okay, and our final view that we're going to do one more sheet. We're going to do an, an exploded view. So we're going to pull our, our pieces apart. So if you go back to the assembly, right here, zoom in on your parts. Over here on the right side, there's something called an exploded view. So if you click on that, you get this menu. We're going to add an exploded view. Click that button up there. And I'd like for you to pull the seat away like this. You can see what it looks like underneath. Okay, let's try that again. Add exploded view, pull this away, and hit the check mark. To end that part, let's do another one. Pull it this way, check mark. And I've, in the past, I've tried pulling all of these apart. It gets really messy really quickly. So we're actually just going to stop right there. All right. And I would like for you to name this view. Give this a name, and we're going to insert that name over in a drawing to end the project here. So would you go into the little box menu right here and go into Named Views for me? And let's just call this Exploded view one and add your own. I'm going to put, one, put your own name there. Hit the plus right there to add that name. Okay, so when you get in to named views, you should have a name waiting for you. Okay, close the exploded view. Close this button and head over to drawings. And on our final drawing, we're going to insert the exploded view. And so watch closely. There's a few clicks that you need to do with me. Okay, we're going to go over, I believe it's assemblies. We're going to go into assemblies. We're going to click on assembly one. All right, when we get in here, let's see. We're looking for the name exploded view one. 
One. Okay, here it is. So when you go in here, I need you to pick under view orientation, look for the name, exploded view with your name on it. Okay, mine's a huge scale right now, so I'm going to scale it down to one to four. Let's try that. I see my brace is off to the side. That's not quite what I was looking for. Oh well. Uh, in the position, you also need to pick. I believe it's explode one. Let's see how this turns out. All right, so to insert our assemblies into our drawing, we have to go and hit insert, switch over to the assemblies tab right here, click on your assembly. Okay, and we're going to do two things here. Number one, we're going to um, do an isometric view. It's completed. Probably you can see one of my braces is missing. I messed up there, but yours should be there. Okay, set that down in an isometric view. And you can right click and show shaded for that one. Adjust your scale if you need to. And then for the other one, we want to do the actual exploded view. So go back to insert, assembly, same as before. This time, under view orientation, I'm asking you to go to exploded view with your name on it. And it still seems like something's wrong. However, you have one more setting to click on where it says default, explode position. All right, try explode one. For me, it was explode two. Okay, but you find, find what works for you. Um, I'm gonna make my scale just a little smaller, one to five, so it fits on the paper a little better. Something like that. Right there, and right click to add some shade to it. No hidden lines needed. All right, so there's your final drawing for the project.